Welcome back to Pedalbox. We're on our ongoing mission to build up enough faith in our wiring harness to be happy plugging in the ECU. We're doing some more work on the accessories and sorting out our side mirror controls. And maybe this time we can actually get the blower motor running like we've promised I think twice now at least. Now, practically eons ago, when we stripped out the wiring harness that we're now using for this car, there's a few things we removed because they're actually fairly standalone. They're not very tightly coupled into the rest of the loom, and we wanted to try and keep them out of the way for a while. Now, there's a bunch of stuff that we took out that we're not putting back in. Obviously, the air conditioning system, obviously stuff like the ABS, which we don't know how to work out the hydraulics for. But one thing that we are going to put back in is our side mirror controls because we've kept the Audi TT mirrors. And we don't have like mechanical uh, control to you know align them and everything. Uh, we're going to try reusing all of the controls, all the wiring that came out of the TT to drive them. Now there's only a couple of points that this whole loom you see in front of us has a connection into the rest of the loom we already have in the car. One is power in, obviously. One is earth, which will actually just go to somewhere on the body. And the other one is the switch to operate the rear window defogger. Now obviously we don't have a rear window defogger, but the mirrors are still power defrosting as well. So we just got finished with all our mirror wiring. This is most of the stuff that we removed. Loads of connectors, loads of wire. We're a lot more sim simplified and streamlined and lightweight now, so happy days. We've got all the power hooked up. We've got the defog feed hooked up. Uh, we've got the controller hooked up. That's dangling somewhere down in the footwell here with all the extra cable. But this is now looking A+, which means we can move on to other boring bits of wiring. Next up, we've got our fan controller for the blower. Now this here is the original uh, four pin connector, I think out of a VW Passat, if I remember right. Aid's made up a little plastic housing that's gonna put this in our, in our dashboard. So hopefully this will integrate fairly easily. So with this being a five position switch, when our fan has four modes, obviously one of which is off, we do need to rewire it slightly. So we're gonna take speeds three and four and wire them both together so that whichever of those you're on, you just get full speed. But it's a pretty simple piece of wiring. We've got 12 volts uh, somewhere in the loom here on one big cable that we feed into the common pin on the back of here. And then for each of the various different speed outputs, we're just gonna run one piece of wire straight out to a matching lead on the fan. And once we're done with all of that, we're gonna rig up the switch and relay that are gonna drive the cooling fans on high speed around in the front of the engine. We've got the relay, it's currently sat at the back of the car, so I can't show you, but that's pretty much ready to go too. So fast forwarding a few minutes and unfortunately the loom that we've part made, we've decided is doomed. Unfortunately, we don't actually have the OEM connector for our fan control block here, which means we're trying to make our own out of spade connectors that we've got in the garage. The only spade connectors we've got are these yellow ones. And if you've done any electronic wiring before, you know that yellow connectors are meant for fairly large wires because they're meant for fairly large wires, the crimps on them just aren't holding at all. They come off just like that, like I barely even had to try. There's more retaining force on the connector to the spade on there than there is from the wire to the connector. So in an unusual turn from us, rather than struggle and try to find a way to make this work and just kind of frustrate ourselves for a few hours, we're just gonna not bother. We're gonna do that another day. And right now we're gonna move on to something else, hopefully a little bit more productive. Thankfully, while we were at it, we did get the fuse box back in. So I think that's fully installed. And unless there's some problems with it that we haven't worked out yet, this is probably it. It's not coming out again until we take everything out to fully paint the body in a long, long time from now. So we look pretty happy with that. And hopefully, since we've got these uh, relays and relay holders, we can probably move on to getting our radiator fans sorted instead. Well, I did a pretty good job selecting a relay kit here. We've got a relay, which includes a little metal mounting tab, which is real convenient, makes it easy to mount it to the body. And it also comes with the relay holder, which is pre-wired with five nice big connectors on the back. So the relay is gonna live just here. So it's a nice short run from there to the fans. And our connector is obviously just gonna plug into the bottom of it nice and easy. Now I'll be honest, I'm a little bit bored of every project car show on YouTube that ever mentions a relay, providing a description of how they work. But I do see why they do it, just in case you don't know. So the gist of this is we're gonna have a small low power switch in the cabin that drives the big switch inside the relay. So you use this to go straight from the battery to here. So you've got your high current is all inside the relay and your little cabin switch can be nice and small and delicate. So we're gonna run battery feed into here. We're gonna run a local ground from here we're gonna run a big high power output to our fans and we're gonna run a little trigger wire from the switch in the cabin. I think Aid is currently off raiding various boxes of wiring and parts to try and get a switch working right now. So the wiring for this is pretty simple. Most of it is fairly local. We've got out to the fan, 
uh, out from our battery wiring that we've already got here and to a local ground that we're going to plumb. We've only really got one wire that we have to send anyway, and that's that trigger wire that I mentioned. So fairly easy piece of work for us today. Now to make sure that the relay is working, we've done a remote battery setup. I've got a big red lead here running all the way back to the main battery terminals in the engine bay. And we've got a short ground lead here that I'm just gonna contact onto the body, onto our sheet, onto our uh, aluminum sheet here. So now the car is live and in between, we've got the old uh, central locking switch from the TT that we're gonna use as the, tri as the uh, temporary trigger into the relay to drive the fans. So when I press this, the fans work. Awesome. I did notice actually my, uh, my ground got a bit warm. My finger was a bit uncomfortable there, but it does seem to work pretty well. So yeah, we've got two fans, both spin in the right direction. Everything seems pretty solid. Well, I'm glad to see the back of another piece of wiring. And although it isn't quite complete yet, we do need to add a switch into the dashboard on the driver's side. I'm not having a very fun time trying to make that panel, so I'm going to ignore it for the time being and let Chris deal with that in his own time, at least before the IVA. In the meantime, what I am going to do is deal with something on the dashboard that's a little bit more in your face, which is this big steel panel. And I'd rather it not ever be in my face, but on the off chance it might end up smacking me around the skull, I need to pad it, and that's not just because I want to pad it, we have to pad it for the IVA. It requires that we have either three or five millimetres of padding on any solid surface like this that you could come into contact with within the specified zone. Most of the specified zone is in front where you would hit it with either your hands, your knuckles, you would brace, anything like that, or if the seatbelt were to fail, your head would come forward and smack into it. Now, having a little bit of padding is not going to save you by any stretch of the imagination, but it probably is going to stop it being quite so catastrophic, or at least it's hopefully going to stop it being quite so catastrophic. Now we're actually going to use something a little bit thicker. This is an old yoga mat, and this is the better part of about half an inch thick. It's very well cushioned, it's very springy, and I'm hoping that's going to give us a little bit more flexibility when it comes to covering it with some material. It's also, by and large, water resistant, and if it's not completely water resistant, it at least doesn't rot when it gets wet. So that will stand us in very good stead. It shouldn't retain too much moisture either, at least I hope not, and the test that I did with it, it didn't retain much moisture at all. So anything that does get through whatever material we put on should easily enough be removable just in atmospheric conditions. Now, the other reason I've gone for something quite this thick is because our center vent sticks out nearly half an inch. And we don't really want it sticking forward because again, that becomes another edge that we have to deal with for the IVA. So having it flush with whatever dashboard we put on is extremely beneficial and will give us a better look overall. So we just need to put this all across the front edge for starters, round on the bottom edge where your knees would potentially hit as well on this side and the other side where all of the wires are on the driver's side next to the steering column. So I'm gonna start cutting this to shape, just using contact adhesive to put it on all the way across the front, around the bottom here and under the steering column, just on the other side of the gear stick there. I'm gonna put the slightly more textured side on the inside for a little bit more surface area contact, but mostly it's because I want the smooth side facing outwards so that we don't see that patterning through whatever material we put on. So while the glue's drying on the dashboard, I'm gonna do a job that I've been putting off for no real good reason other than it seemed quick enough, but actually we do need some outside help to fix. So it's gonna take a little bit longer and that is putting the O2 bongs in. Now you can see we've reinstalled the uh, exhaust here so that we can work out the positioning that we need to put these bongs in. Cause it's all well and good just drilling a hole, welding them up. But once you end up putting the O2 sensor in, which sticks about this far off the top of the, um, exo uh, the exhaust bong, you're starting to have problems, particularly if you have a heat shield that sits over the top of it. And I did a very quick measurement and there is basically no way I can get it this side of, uh, of vertical to the back of the car. The cabling is just not gonna fit underneath the heat shield. So we need to clock it forwards. 
Now we can't put it too far around, we don't want it to be beyond horizontal, so 90 degrees from the top around that side. People who know more than me have told me this and I am inclined to believe them. I can't think that I've ever seen an O2 sensor that is further around that on any exhaust. And I'm just going to run with it, I'm not going to question the matter. So what we need to do is find a position for these O2 bungs where the sensor will fit it will also have the cabling sufficiently out of the way that it's not going to get fried and melted and destroyed by the heat from either the turbo, the uh, compressor side um, outlet from the turbo, or the exhaust manifold itself. And I found top dead center mark whilst it's set in this position using a square. So I just put that on the top, found the bubble, and then marked top and the side so I could work out where basically my limits are. But I'm actually going to stick a little bit further away from that. I'm going to go probably at least 45 degrees up given the position that these are in. So somewhere between 30 degrees off vertical and 45 degrees off vertical should give me enough clearance to get the cable in on that side and keep it far enough away from anything that's going to make it melt. So I think I've got them roughly in the same place at the same angle because I think it'll look a lot more pleasing rather than having them at random angles. And we've moved this one slightly further along from being on this tube directly after the cat just onto this bend to keep it a little bit further away from both the turbo housing and the um, outlet from it that sits across the top there. So that should hopefully keep the wires from melting at that end and at this end it's reasonably well positioned we'll be able to take the wiring up and away to the right rather than going over the top of the block or rather than going so close to the exhaust we can take it easier to the top of the block out the way. Well, there's a lesson relearned. Stainless steel, very hard. I've pretty much burnt that um, step a bit out, drilling this hole far too fast on the drill press. It was fine through four, six, eight, 10 mil after the pilot hole went in, getting up to 12 and 14, it really started to get unhappy. And judging by the le uh, look of the edge, it's completely blunt. So I've slowed the uh, drill press down, Got it working nicely through to about 20 mil, but even 22 was a real challenge. So I had to finish it off with the die grinder and a file. And yes, stainless is very, very hard. But these are a nice fit now. This one is an extremely nice fit. It doesn't go anywhere. This one just has a tiny amount of play, but it doesn't actually fall out. Oh, maybe it does now. Okay, that has a little bit more play than I thought it did. But we'll get those welded in. We can send this off now, and I'm gonna move back onto the dashboard. What's well, the top panel of the dash back on and I really like how that is coming in. Once this is covered in some slightly thinner stuff, probably three or four mil, it's really gonna look nice when everything's wrapped in material. I like how this has got round and has softened all of the corners. My shins are no longer at risk underneath here, which is excellent news. And I've also gone all the way across the bottom section onto the driver's side as well and around that corner. A couple of little bits to trim off. I just need to add a piece across the top here. Now I'm going to wait to do that because I'm not sure what we're going to put in this section, whether that's going to end up being completely closed off with a metal panel, at which point I need to put another piece in. It might as well all be one. I don't want to have too many small pieces or if that's going to have some sort of switch mounted into it. We haven't worked that out yet, but we might just be 3D printing a little bit, at which point it'll just be a strip that runs straight across there. Around this box is where the um, heater controls are gonna be. This is gonna be the stereo. So something else will go in the very center section of here. But other than that, this side is now complete and we're just waiting on the rest of the controls to be worked out where they're gonna go and we can finish this whole thing off. So that's gonna be it for today. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, hit the little notification bell, like the video, and let us know in the comments what you think. If you wanna support us, you can go to patreon.com forward slash pedalboxshow. And if you go to shop.pedalbox.show as well, you will get discount if you're a patron based on the tier that you have. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time when hopefully we'll get a little bit further on with the dashboard and cross a bunch more little jobs off the list. Mm -hmm.